Hey guys, welcome to your 17th JavaScript and the DOM tutorial and in this video I'm going to show you how to create some tabbed content. Okay then, so we've nearly completed the functionality of this mini app but there's just one major component I want to add and that is some kind of tabbed content system at the bottom. So a couple of tabs, when you click on them it shows related content to that tab. So the first thing I want to do is insert the HTML for this. So let's go to the index file and I'm just going to paste this in. I've copied it from my repo, which you can get. So I'll just quickly go through this. We have a div surrounding the whole thing right here with an ID of tabbed content. Then we have a UL at the top with a class of tabs. Each LI represents a tab which you can click on. And then these divs down here, these are content panels, each with a class of panel. They represent the content that is going to show when you click on a tab. So each tab is represented by each panel. Make sense? So the way this is going to work is that we're going to click on one of these LI tags. Now we're going to listen out for that event. When we click on it, we're going to look for this data target attribute. So this is a custom data target attribute. And this right here has a value of an ID. So hash about and hash contact. So when we click this, we're going to grab this value and we're going to look for this ID in one of the panels. So you can see this panel right here has an ID of about. So the idea is that when we click on this, we want to show this. And we're going to do that by grabbing this ID, looking for this panel and displaying it as block. By default, panels are going to be displayed as none, so they don't show. And only active panels with this class of active will have a display of block. OK, so we're going to click on this, find the target, then we'll give it the class of active and let it display as block. Make sense? Okay then, so let's save this. I just want to go to the styles first of all to show you the styles. So the li tags, which represent the tabs themselves, just style to make them look like a little button. Then the panels have a display of none by default. Then when they have a class of active applied to them, they're displayed as block, right? So let's hook up this functionality now. So the first thing I want to do is grab a reference to both of the tabs and the panels, right? So two different variables we need. So let's create a constant, first of all, called tabs. And set that equal to documents.query selector. And then we're going to query the tabs. So this is the UL. And the next thing we need is a constant for the panels. And we'll set that equal to document.query selector all this time. And we're going to look for the panels. So let's pass in the panel class. So this one right here is the UL and we're going to attach an event listener to the UL, which is this thing surrounding the LI tags. Now, when we click on something, the item we click on is going to be the E dot target, the target element. So we can check whether that target element is in fact an LI. If we wanted to, we could attach event listeners to both of these things. But instead, I'm attaching it to this and then checking what the target element that was clicked is. If it's an ally, then we're going to do something. OK, so let's attach that event. So we'll say tabs dot add event listener. And the event is going to be a click event. And then outside here, we're going to do a function which is going to take in the event object. And inside this function, what do we want to do? Well, first of all, we want to check if the target was the li did we click on an li tag so we'll say if e dot target dot tag name is equal to li in capitals then we're going to do something right if we didn't click on an li we don't want to do anything but if we did then what we want to do is grab this thing right here this data hyphen target attribute we want to know which panel we want to show so let's grab that so i'll say const and we'll name this target panel and set that equal to documents.query selector. And the thing we want to query is the target attribute, right? So we'll say e dot target dot and we're going to use a property now called data set. So what data set does is look for data attributes. So this right here is a data attribute. It's data hyphen then whatever name we give it. We've called it target. So we can use the data set to find that attribute. And then after data set, we say dot whatever name we've given to this data set. I called mine target. 
But if you called yours, for example, data hyphen beans, then you'd use data set dot beans to grab that value. All right. So we're querying that now, which is equal to either about or contact like so. We're querying that in the DOM and it's going to retrieve that panel. So that's the target panel. That's the thing that we want to show. Anything else we don't want to show. So right now, what I want to do is cycle through every single panel, check if the panel is equal to the target panel. If it is equal to the target panel, then what we want to do is give it a class of active to say we want to show that. If it's not equal to the target panel, then we're going to remove that class of active so it doesn't show. Make sense? So let's cycle through the panels. So I'll say panels dot for each and I don't need to turn panels into an array because this method right here document dot query selector all returns a node list remember and that node list we can use for each on. So we'll say for each and then pass in a function right here and then for each iteration round we want to pass in the individual panel. So what we're going to do now is check if that panel is equal to the target panel. So I'll say if and then in brackets panel is equal to target panel. If that is the case, then we want to apply a class of active to the panel. So I'll say panel dot class list dot add, and then we want to give it a class of active. Okay. If that's not the case, if these two do not equal each other, then we'll need an else statement so that we can take away that class. So we'll say panel dot class list dot remove, and we're going to remove the active class. Okay. So just to quickly run through it again, we're grabbing a reference to the tabs, which is the UL. Then we're grabbing a reference to all of the panels. Then we're attaching a click event listener to the tabs, that UL. When we click it, we're finding out if the target that we clicked, the tag name of that target was an LI. If we did click an LI, then what we do is we grab the target panel by saying document.query selector, passing in e.target.dataset.target which is going to be this attribute right here. So either hash about or hash contact. So we're grabbing a reference to that target element. Then we're cycling through each of the panels on the page. We're checking if the panel through that iteration is indeed the target panel. If it is, then we're going to add a class of active to that panel. If it's not, we're going to remove a class of active of that panel. So let's save it and check it out in a browser over here. So currently by default, it's on about because we have a class of active already associated with it in the HTML. You can see we give it a class of active to start. So if I go to the contact tab, we can see this content changes down here. If I go back, it goes to about. And if we check in the DOM itself in the code, we can see down here, currently this is active. If I click on contact, then we remove the class of active from that div panel and add it to this one. If I go back, then we add it to the about one. All right. So there we go. That's how we can make a simple tab system. There's more we can do with this. For example, we could style up these LI tags based on if they're active or not, etc. That's up to you. You can have a play around and do that if you like. If you do do anything, feel free to share the link down below and I'll take a look.